Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, my friends. Hello, hello, hello. It is, what is it, it's 24th of June, 2020. We're just sort of sneaking out of our uh, new moon eclipse window, which is generally three days either side of the event. Um, <clears throat> so we've still got, I don't know, till about, whatever it was, six o'clock tonight before we're out of that. Um, but here we are. It's chat with Matt. Hello, Mary Sykes. It's chat with Matt, half an hour to talk about whatever's going on. If I'm correct, no one has given me anything to start with, so I am free. Uh, free agent um, here to share. Hey, brother Gary, how are you? Awesome day here on the Kapiti coast of New Zealand, Aotearoa. Uh, fine winter's day. A bit cold overnight, but beautiful nonetheless. Um, how can we serve? What's going on? What do you guys want to know? You guys want to know? Let's just close that. Um, let's put this on silent because I know what will happen otherwise. Awesome, Barb. What does Barb want to know? How are you guys going over there in in uh, Niagara? Niagara Falls. How are you guys going? I've been integrating over the last couple of days. So I did pop on and do some live streams. Um, been doing a lot of gardening and a lot of all of that. Neck issues for Barb. Mm. There is a lot of with OCD still. Okay. So understanding that OCD is a distraction technique that we use to cope with uh, fear and stress, or the stress based on fear and um, and it's quite effective. Right? <laughs> it helps us project our discomfort from the internal stuff to the external, and so now we get uncomfortable with things being out of place or or certain protocols needing to be done, which basically. It, it, it's a way of trying to control the external world to mitigate the the out of control that we're feeling internally. Generally, that's a generalisation, right? Without talking to Barb right now and digging a little bit deeper, and I have to admit my memory's not great, and I know I've talked about this before, um, but I can't remember exactly what Barb's OCD stuff is, and it doesn't really matter um, because I'll talk a little bit more um, general here to help people with the understanding of, of why OCD is showing up uh, so that you can relax out of fighting OCD and start to put your attention onto what will basically help clear it from the roots rather than making the actions themselves wrong and then yourself wrong for not being able to control the habits, right? Because that doesn't help. Piling extra layers of wrongness on top of, which is basically a fear-based coping mechanism or a coping mechanism for dealing with you know, deeply entrenched internal fears um, just doesn't help because the last thing we need to do is erode more of our self-confidence when it's basically a lack of confidence that's allowing these fears to uh, overwhelm us to the point where we're using coping mechanisms such as, you know, obsessively washing our hands or obsessively cleaning the house or whatever it might be, right? There's so many different um, behaviors that can fall into what we call obsessive compulsive disorder, but basically it's a it's it's a distraction type, uh, it, you know, it's a distraction or a coping mechanism for dealing with internal fears. Now you're not wrong, Barb, and anyone else is not wrong. And Mary, I know you deal with your you know share of internal fears as well as do I. We're not wrong for having internal fears. Um, Continuing negative thoughts that come to sabotage our good thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't word it that way, Mary. I would say your negative thoughts are coming up um, uh, to release because you are having good thoughts, because you are choosing the good thoughts. You're choosing the good thoughts and that's instigating the, the release or the rise of these negative thoughts, which are basically... Um, I could say that they're protesting, but basically they're getting shaken out of of where they've been hiding. They're basically your mind's interpretation of, of layers of trauma and pain that are uh, hidden in your field from, from experiences that you've had in the past. Yeah, and dealing with demons, right? So in your past, you have dealt with demonic 
personalities here on this planet, right? We've dealt with some very dark beings who have basically been in the process of persecuting you and torturing you. And so they've implanted you with vibrations that you are now in the process of releasing yourself from. You are in the process of releasing yourself from it. It's not that you need to release yourself to be free. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. The way to be free right now is to stop making the process wrong, right? For both you and Barb. So what's arising to the surface is the vibration or the repercussion of the vibration that you're currently in the process of releasing. You're in the process of releasing it because your intention is to step into a more expansive version of yourself. Your intention is to step into your happiness. Your intention is to step into love and peace and authentic confidence within yourself or even empowered freedom. So you're holding your intentions in the right direction. And now all that's required really from both of you or anyone else for that matter is to trust that while it's rather uncomfortable experiencing the symptomology of what you're releasing, it is in fact working. And the less you doubt it, and when I say doubt, it's not wrong to have doubtful thoughts arise because that's part of the process. But the less that you give credence to these doubtful thoughts in the way of identifying them and making them wrong and thus thinking that you need to fight against them or fix them or correct yourself, right? You're having this process of purification go on and you're seeing what's coming up from within you and you're then going into, I need to fix this and there's nothing to fix. You're already in the process of releasing it. All you need to do is stay confident that I'm just releasing this. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing, I don't need to judge myself about this. Yeah, it's it's ugly. The thoughts in the head seem demonic. And if I'm having demonic thoughts in my head, maybe I'm a demon, but that's, that's the implant, right? So you have to feel, um, no, you don't have to feel anything. So you have to choose to stay confident despite the fact that you're not feeling confident, despite the fact that you're not feeling safe, despite the, despite the fact that you're not feeling comfortable with what you're experiencing. None of it is wrong. And the, the least amount of wrongness you can pile on top of yourself, the faster and the more effectively you'll go through the process of freeing yourself from this experience. It doesn't mean that the experience will all of a sudden stop uh, for you to be free, it means that you will no longer suffer through it and thus you will be free. You will no longer um, contract around it and thus you'll be free. You'll no longer modify your actions and how you experience the world and thus you'll be free, right? Yeah, you feel that you're evil because of this, but you're not evil. So you have to keep reminding yourself that what you are feeling is not who you are, right? That's, that's, that, that is empowered transformation 101 what you are feeling is not what you are being but rather what you are releasing so you have to remember that you're releasing evil implants you are not evil so you feel the evilness but that's not who you are so you have to let go of that and it does require a level of discipline and dedication and devotion and trust in the process and in yourself as a being of light so that's the whole thing. The more that you can allow yourself to feel this evilness without contracting into the belief that I am evil, then, then, then you're going to succeed. Yeah, so I know you want to be free. You want to be free of all of it, but you think that being free of all of it is no, not experiencing it and that is never going to happen, right? As long as you want to not experience it, you will always be experiencing it. The only way you're going to get into the space of not experiencing it anymore is when you accept that you can be free while experiencing it. Okay, so and you can be that it's not that's not just some trick to get rid of it. it you can actually be free, you know, like Nelson Mandela's. Um, and I'm not even going to try and say it again in case I stuff it for the third time. But anyway. <laughs> Mandela, Nelson Mandela. I got it. I had to just think about it. Um, his, you know, great um, example was: doesn't matter what external situation you're in, doesn't even matter what internal arisings are happening within you. You choose. You choose your peace. You choose your your centeredness. You choose your happiness in the process, right? And when you do, you have earned your freedom. You have true freedom when your freedom is no longer. Um, no longer influenced by your external world. When your peace is no longer influenced by your external world, you have true peace, right? I've got a meme that I've been meaning to put up for ages. It basically says that if you think you need um, firearms to 
to protect your freedom, then you don't have freedom yet, right? If you think you need a firearm to protect your freedom, you don't have freedom yet. And I'm not really wanting to get into the firearm debate whether you should or you shouldn't, but the point is needing a firearm to think to, to maintain your freedom is basically indicating that you don't have freedom yet. Because if you think someone can take your freedom away with force, you don't really know what freedom is. Freedom cannot be taken away. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a confidence within yourself. It's a true alignment with, with your God self, right? When you have that, you have real freedom. And it doesn't matter what's happening down here with your physical body. You can express and be a state of peaceful freedom within it, right? That's what we're aiming at. So, and, and, and yeah, that's a lofty goal. And I'm not saying that that's where you need to get to before your life is going to be better because every little step toward that is going to help. And for you right now, you and Barb and everyone else, it's about firstly remembering that what you're feeling is not what you're being. And secondly, to not judge yourself based on what you're feeling, right? Not to make yourself wrong for feeling what you're feeling and not to allow what you're feeling to start influencing and reinforcing these belief systems that have basically been implanted in you from the past to remember that narrative this is stuff that's been implanted and i am releasing it right now not like i'm releasing it right now and i expect to feel not feel it anymore but i'm releasing its influence over me right now so that i can keep choosing to be expansive and purposeful and happy and peaceful in myself right now, despite the fact that I'm having feelings that, that are, feel like demons, right? Despite the fact that I'm having feelings that feels like hopeless, useless, worthless, but despite the fact that I might be having feelings that feel suicidal, despite the fact that I might be having feelings that are intensely angry and rageful and are scaring me, despite the fact that I might be having feelings that are deeply depressed and, you know, whatever. We can be all guilty, right? And despite the fact that I'm feeling really, really guilty for being born with white skin now and I did nothing to deserve this, right? I don't deserve to have white skin. I don't deserve to be the whatever, right? The, uh, you know, heterosexual white male, the, the what, what's the privileged? I don't deserve this privilege, right? So many people are contracting into guilt because they have been told that they're privileged and they don't feel that they deserve that privilege and they're certainly not feeling privileged. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff going on on this planet right now and it's all caught up in. The reason it's creating such influence and, and ripples and waves and influence is because people are caught up in identifying with what they are feeling. And really, there's a huge amount of stuff coming up in the feeling world right now to be released, right? We are feeling what we are purging. And in this energetic container that the world is currently sitting in, in this energetic soup, purging is happening at, at a miraculously massive level, right? Which is very, very exciting because we're letting go of a lot of stuff but is also incredibly intense and difficult to maintain an empowered mindset as we go through it. Yeah, of course, there are implants to, to fear your God self. There are implants to just to, to tell you that being God is actually a dangerous thing to do and that you're not worthy of doing it and that you're not capable of doing it. And if you try and do it, then you're going to fail and you're going to um, miss your chance um, and thus end up in hell for eternity. There's all sorts of implants that are playing through your field, uh, Sister Mary, that have been put in very calculatedly, put in by beings of darkness in other times where they really had the rule of power and through, you know, torturous experience basically implanted us with beliefs. Um, but it's our job now in this new higher vibration to allow those fears to come to the surface so that we can release them, right? Those fears are just waves of energy in the field. They don't need to have so much power over you if you don't give them so much power. If you don't give these demonic thoughts as much power, if you don't label them as demonic and then put them on a high pedestal thinking, sorry, I don't want that over. Here we go. I've worked out where to put my hand to change the exposure of the camera. Um, <laughs> if you don't want those um, vibrations to overly influence you, then you need to stop giving them so much power, right? 
just remember what they are. They're just implants by, by shadow beings. Um, and yeah, they put them in at the time where they really did have the advantage on the playing board, but they don't have the advantage today. They simply do not have the advantage today. They're still hanging on to the lead that they gathered. They're still hanging on to their power base, which is a lot of money and a lot of influence in political and various structural um, parts of society. You know, the law and for, you know, all of it, right? It's, they've set themselves up, but the point is they've lost their power now. And so these implants do not need to uh, maintain nearly so much influence over you. Your job is to see them for what they are, scoff at them if you must, right? Laugh, cry even, um, but move on, move on through the process and just keep choosing to know that you don't need to stop stepping into your most expansive version of yourself. You don't need to stop attaining your highest level of happiness just because you're carrying these vibrations from the path. Past, sorry, vibrations from the past. I guess we both feel that we should not have them if we are really of God. Yeah, and again, that's another great implant, isn't it? And it's not the truth because we all have them, right? I am definitely of God and yet I'm still dealing with all sorts of discordant thoughts and feelings and vibrations from within my field that are coming up to release all sorts of things that tell me why I'm not good enough, all sorts of things that tell me why it's not appropriate for me to do what I'm here to do. It's all sorts of things that tell me I should be scared of stepping forward because it's likely to end in um, me being persecuted again. And it's simply not the truth. If I was really what I preach myself to be, right, if I was really authentically confident, I wouldn't be having these thoughts, right? wrong. I am having these thoughts and I am choosing to be authentically confident. So we have to let go of that logic again, implanted and trained within us that we keep um, believing that if we're something, we shouldn't be feeling it, right? If I'm confident, I shouldn't be feeling fear. Um, and it's just not the truth. It's not the truth. Confidence is not the lack of the feeling of fear. Confidence is the ability to step past the fear, right? Being of God is the ability to, to, to hold the totality of it all and to still know thyself as God, right? Because God is both light and dark. I'll go back into that. I think I talked about that last week, did I not? Um, so the being of God, the dark beings are of God as well. I know you want to think that God is only the light, but that's just your... Uh, your preference as a being of light, right? To want to think that your God is of light. Um, the beings of darkness, believe it or not, don't want to think that God is of light. They want to think that God is only of darkness, right? The, those who are ascending on either the dark path or the light path realize that God is both, right? The very darkest beings understand, right? Because they have a much level, much higher level of understanding, still means that they, you know, advocate for their way, right? Which is for darkness to rule the planet, um, because that's their preference, and they're well entitled to it, and that's part of the whole play between light and dark to allow God to understand itself better, right? So, um, get over it, <laughs> get over thinking um, that you, you know, that you you know, that God's somehow forsaking you because you've got these evil thoughts within you, right? All these dark thoughts within you. Um, I know you choose love and light, but the point is that if you choose love and light and then make yourself wrong for having dark within you, you rob yourself of experiencing love and light. That's the point. That's the point, right? If you, It's great to choose love and light, but then if you make yourself wrong for experiencing anything other than love and light, you can't actually have love and light. That's the point, right? You have to be willing to accept you, know, you have to be willing to accept death before you can really live. You have to be willing to accept darkness before you can really experience the light. Because if you're trying to hold something away from you, thinking that I shouldn't experience that, then you can't really experience anything. That's the truth, right? If you're, yeah, I could give you some other examples, but I won't go <laughs> rabbiting down that hole. We must be willing to accept there's two sides to it lost the exposure again. We must be willing to accept <laughs> how we must be willing to accept that. Um, hi, my name's Matt. I'm a, ex <laughs> I'm a recovering people pleaser. It's been two hours since I've pleased my last person. Um, <laughs> we have to be willing to accept that there's two sides to every coin and it's very disempowered for us to not be willing to experience the opposite of what we want. Um, because when we do that, then we can't actually 
fully embrace what we are choosing because we are too busy trying to hold off the opposite of it and thus we will never get in because what we what we resist will persist right so if you make yourself wrong every time you have an evil thought you're resisting the evil thoughts and thus evil thoughts will persist so you have to be willing to accept evil thoughts arise in your head right dark thoughts arise in your head as the process of purification so that they're not wrong right you have to use an narrative, an empowered narrative to allow yourself to experience the opposite of what you are choosing so that you can move into experiencing more of what you are choosing. I know that sounds ironic. I know that sounds opposite to the logic that we've been trained in our schooling and our education in general, that you know, once you choose something, that's all that you should accept, right? We're told not to accept anything less. Don't accept anything less, right? <laughs> that level of resistance and contraction basically keeps us into never experiencing what we're choosing truly choosing. So um, I know you need to be reminded of this a lot, Mary. I think I've been telling it to you for uh, four years now. It was May 2016 when um, you first entered my world, um, as far as I can remember, right? You bought um, a package around about that. I think, I think, or maybe it was the next package. I can't remember, to be honest. But I know it's it's been a while. So, and I'm not making you wrong for that, by the way. It's just the process. Um, in that time, I've had to remind myself a hell of a lot about a lot of a lot, a lot, a lot of things as well. Um, how's Sister Sarah going? Um, how did you how did you pull through your um, uh, midsummer break with with your extended family in your quaint country house? Let me know. Um, so that's the point, Sister Mary. It's not to judge yourself. Um, or align with the um, vibrations that you're feeling are rising within you, the thoughts that are popping into your mind or the feelings that are coming up. Trust that that is what you are releasing and choose not to make it wrong. Whatever you make wrong, you will not get rid of. So don't accept it. Acceptance is the pathway, right? Relaxation and acceptance are the pathway to purification and evolution right we must be willing to relax through it we can't keep trying hard we can't keep trying to get rid of things we you know you can't push things away thinking that you know you don't want to feel this anymore as, as long as you're feeling i don't want to feel this anymore you're going to keep feeling it you need to be willing to accept what you are feeling in order for you to let it go so <sighs> deep breathing relaxing into acceptance and trust beyond above everything for you to be able to relax and accept you need to be willing to trust that everything is going to work out if you are just willing to do this right there's as long as you're perpetuating the doubts that say well if i'm feeling this then perhaps i am it and i need to get rid of these feelings to prove that i'm not that right i need to prove that i'm not evil so that god accepts me as long as you're having those thoughts you're going to keep you're going to be lost right so you need to understand you need to trust that you are god and there is no necess necessity for you to win god's love or god's acceptance because it's you right so that the acceptance is your acceptance. It's self-acceptance. Is all you're looking for. Um, that's that is God acceptance, right? So once you let go of needing to prove yourself to God by getting rid of your evil thoughts, and again, this has been indoctrinated belief pattern to keep us disempowered and in guilt, right? That as long as you're having an evil thought, that you're not going to get into heaven, and thus you need to get rid of all of your evil thoughts so that you can reach your salvation, right? This is what has perpetuated people staying stuck in guilt and low self-worth for a long time, and thus continually having negative thoughts, right? Because they're in resistance to negative thoughts. They make negative thoughts very wrong and thus negative thoughts predominate. And then they feel even more and more guilty and less and less empowered. And they're trying to hide all these negative thoughts from the rest of the world because then other people will judge them as being non-godly and thus, you know, bad. Uh, Sister Sarah, all good. Back to city life was really great insight you gave on the situation. Thank you, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm glad it helped. Um, everything can only come through yourself, Mary, because yourself is all there is, right? The you know a lot of people want to talk about truth these days, and there is only one truth, and the truth is we are all one. That's it. That's the end of absolute truth. Everything other than that is a perception. Everything other than that is relative. So you know, people get very very caught up in truth, right? I had a discussion with someone the other day about morality, and they said, you know. You, you know, if you tell a lie, that's just not moral. And I said, well, how do you know if something's a lie? And they said, well, if it's not truth. And I said, well, how do you know what's true? And, you know, and, and it's like, well, that's just what you believe. So you, you, you're basically saying that if you say something other than what you believe, 
that's that's immoral. Oh no, that's okay because beliefs change. Yeah, well, what's the truth again? <laughs> right? People get so screwed up in this idea that you know to tell anything other than the truth. Your truth is just what you believe. Um, so. And then they get very contracted around saying anything other than what they believe. They don't understand that, you know, I'm having to understand very, very deeply that as a facilitator, I have to be willing to say whatever is going to benefit the person. I don't, you know, deliberately go trying to lie to people, but I have to be willing to say, as a channel, I have to be willing to say whatever is coming out of my mouth because that is my strong intention that that's going to serve people. So as long as I get, if I get contracted in, oh, that's not the truth, then I'm going to limit myself, oh, go away, exposure. I'm going to limit myself incredibly about what I can actually deliver to help people. Because the truth is, I don't know the truth. I only know my truth. I don't know the truth. And I'm speaking to someone else. I don't know what their truth is. And I don't know whether their truth needs to be challenged or whether their truth needs to be reinforced. And it doesn't really matter because their higher self knows and their higher self is willing to speak through me um, and thus deliver what they need to hear. Truth or no truth is irre it just doesn't matter, right? It's just an, it's just a moot point in judging things whether they're true or not, right? Yeah, you can be aware of whether it's true for you or not, but understand that it, whether it's true for you or not is in this moment, and your truth is going to keep evolving. So it might not be true for you today, but it might be true for you tomorrow, or it might have been true for you yesterday. <laughs> right? Truth is not absolute, other than the fact that we are all one. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people get very, very hung up on this idea. Oh, well, they're lying. They're telling not truth. And it's kind of like, yeah, I get it. You could say, yeah, they're, they're deliberately manipulating. And I get that, right? They're deliberately manipulating. They're de deliberately saying things that they don't actually believe to be for the best good of all. Um, that's not a great thing, right? That's not a great thing. And we can call it lying or we can call it whatever. But, but a lot of people go on this, on this hunt because I get very contracted now about trying to find out what the truth is before they can speak anything. Um, and it's important to know in order for our mental health to, to get this concept of true is relative. It's very, very relative and not to judge ourselves based on, on what we are saying or what anyone else is saying based against this mythical thing called truth. Yeah. And then we start talking about facts, right? But it's not factual. And it's like, yeah, it used to be a fact that the earth was flat. Some people still believe that fact, for that matter, right? But but those of us who have flown in a plane around the world know that it's not the truth, right? <laughs> those of us who have gone up high enough in a plane, looked out the window and gone, yep, it certainly looks pretty curved to me. <laughs> it certainly looks pretty spherical to me, um, right? So, but the point is, it used to be a fact that the atom was the smallest d indivisible particle, right? That used to be a fact. And if you said anything other than that, you were lying because you were going against the facts. The facts have changed, right? No, now we understand this protons, neutrons. Oh, now we understand that they can be divided. Oh, now we understand that the whole thing is made up of fucking nothing, <laughs> right? It's all just energy. We've come back to that, right? Quantum physics has gone to, to deeply down the rabbit hole and contradicts much of Newtonian physics, which we have called fact for so long. And the truth is, while Newtonian physics is a great thing to use to uh, approximate how the world works, which has allowed us to build skyscrapers and fantastic machines and even spaceships have been built with Newtonian physics because the stuff works. It's not the truth. It's not the truth, but it works, but it's not the truth. So we have to let go. And I know I'm talking for, as like an engineer, like I'm talking to another engineer, but the point is um, there's a lot of stuff that works that's not the absolute truth. And so we don't need to throw it out. We don't need to throw Newtonian physics out because quantum physics shows that it's basically contradictory because Newtonian physics actually works to help us do things that are beneficial. And beneficial is all that matters. This is benefiting us. It might not be the absolute truth, but it's benefiting us. So therefore it's good for now for us. And that's all that matters, right? So when we understand that that's basically what we're dealing with rather than this idea of truth or false, then <clears throat> we have much more allowance for the world and we stop, stop. <laughs> I'm just changing the exposure, but it was good timing. But then we stop judging everything <clears throat> and contracting so much. We stop getting so stressed. Stop it. 
We stop getting so stressed. I've got to keep my arms down. We got to get so I sit on my hands. We got to get. We've got to stop getting so stressed, right, and contracting around these judgment points, right? These rights and wrongs for yourself and for others, and then just get into what benefits me right now. How can I be more happy in this situation? How can I actually live a more purposeful life right now? Not needing to be right, but needing to be happy right now. How can I do that, right? Let myself be guided into that. Let go of judgment. Oh, other people are going to judge me as crazy if I start doing that. If I start you know, singing on the back lawn in bare feet, um, the people are going to think I'm crazy, but it feels really good. <laughs> Does it really matter if other people think you're crazy, right? Ah. Oh. I'm sitting on my hands and I still managed to change the exposure. Um, <laughs> am I going for time, my friends? I do have another session starting in a few minutes. Um, I'm pretty much done chat with Matt. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was helpful. Hey, brother Christian, how are you going over there? Chi going away, hopefully, um, and earning a living doing so. Doing something. Anyway, uh, that was chat for Matt. Chat for Matt. That was chat with Matt. It was for Matt as well because I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you very much for stimulating the conversation, Mary and others. Um, Sarah wrote in. I've listened. I'm gonna. Oh no, I'll try. No, I will read it over here because. Oh, what do I need to do? Refresh this thing because it's already scrolled up and it had see more. And I know I have an interesting relationship with the see more button. Um, here we go, Sarah. I've listened to some of your recent calls from last weekend. Yesterday evening, I was crying all night because of a little fight I had with my spouse. Also, the hormones make me super emotional, but I was thinking maybe it was part of releasing from the light language sessions as well. But yes, to get it all out. I cried like a baby, really deep. Happened to me before, also during this pregnancy. Maybe it's some unreleased sorrow from when I was a baby, deep sadness, but the crying helps. You don't need to understand why, Sister Sarah. Trust that this is really good. Trust that your increased hormone levels and you are basically, you know, when you're pregnant, you basically, your body purifies itself to be, you know, um, able to hold a child and to um, nurture a child really well. And it's not just doing that physically, it's doing that emotionally. So you're letting go of unresolved um, emotional issues that's going to help you parent your child better. So be willing to go through that process and not to judge yourself. It sounds like you did really well. So yeah, a little fight with your spouse is just a trigger point to bring up what needed to come out. But it's much, much deeper than that, as you recognize so allow yourself to trust that it is much deeper and not to allow the external narrative of what triggered you to you know, start to become a problem now. Oh, I'm not getting on with my spouse because we've had this fight and it's really upset me. It didn't really upset you. It just triggered you to release some deep upset that you've been carrying, no doubt, for you know, a long time, whether, you know, sometime from your childhood or before other lifetimes, or perhaps obviously quite often a combination of both. Something we're carrying from another lifetime gets reinforced through this childhood or this earlier lifetime. Thing just paused for a minute and told me to reconnect. Um, and so um, just trust that process, just trust that process. And um, pregnancy um, is a great time for doing some deep healing work. Um, so, so be in allowance of that and, and don't allow yourself to go into, oh my God, oh my God, I'm falling apart, I'm non-functional. How am I ever going to be a, a mother if I'm you know, so emotional? Let go of any belief like that and just trust that what you are releasing now, this emotional overload that you're experiencing is an awesome process to prepare you to be much more capable uh, and not that it's going to be automatically easy, by the way. <laughs> right? You're still quite emotional generally while you are... Um, breastfeeding so um but it's all good it's all good and and your job is to just be in acceptance uh, and to be confident in your be confident in your acceptance so that those around you can also be in acceptance so that your spouse doesn't contract into fear around the fact right you just need to be confident and reinforce the fact that it's okay what you are going through and no one needs to really worry about you even though you spent the night crying right Awesome. We're holding support. And and yes, the light language, no doubt, will have, you know, loosened things up and lubricated the process as well. Um, that's just what light language does, right? And then it doesn't always just, dis you know, in a light language session, it doesn't just disappear. Sometimes these emotions need to be felt and expressed and crying 
or screaming are all valid ways of getting through what needs to be released. So awesome, awesome. I trust that that will help you. Great, that we got the uh, opportunity to uh, dance with that before we disappear. I must disappear though, because I do have another session in a few minutes and I've got a couple of things to do before then uh, for my personal comfort, comfort going into another session. Anyway, my friends, bye for now. Much, much love. Namaste. We'll speak to you again um, this time next week. Same time, same place. I'll be back to chat with Matt. If you have any questions or concerns or want to stimulate a conversation in the meantime, post into this group, right? We're here to support you all. Um, and if you're a member of my other groups, then, you know, link into the highest option you have <laughs> and we will help you. Uh, much, much love. Bye for now. Bye-bye.